Geometric sequences are a series of numbers in which you're multiplying by the same amount every time. So, you know, don't confuse them with arithmetic sequences where you're adding the same amount every time. Here's an example. You might have like 1, 3, 9, 27. Definitely you add 2, you don't add 2. There's no adding the same amount every time. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. This is definitely a geometric sequence. And you're multiplying by 3, it looks like, every time. 1 times 3 is 3. Right, three times three is nine. Sure enough, this is definitely a geometric sequence. And this has to exactly continue on in this pattern to be a ge geometric sequence. It can't be like times three, times three, times three, and then all of a sudden times four to get to the next guy. It has to be constant. So that's the first thing. So a lot of, a lot of test questions will be like, is this a geometric sequence or arithmetic or neither? And if it's multiplied by constant number every time, then you know for a fact that it's geometric. And sometimes it's a little less clear, like, you know, what if you had this? What if you had, um, I don't know, four, four thirds, uh, four ninths, and you're like, what is going on? I have no clue what is going on. And the good news is, is if you think that it's multiplied by something every time, and you don't know what that number is, it's not like two or three, there's a way to find it, and it's using algebra, right? You can say, I don't know what the number is that I'm multiplying. And whenever you say, I don't know in algebra, you put x. So you're, you would say, four times, I have no idea, right, equals four thirds. So four times something is four thirds. And then all you have to do here is, up, oh, divide by sides, both by four, divide by four, x equals four over three. And then again, dividing by four is the same as multiplying by one over four. Fours cancel. Sure enough, I'm multiplying by a third every time, I think. So this is definitely times a third. Let's see if the next one is. Okay, let's test it. Four thirds times a third again would be four top times top over bottom times out of nine. Oh, yes, this is geometric. And not only that, it's multiplied by one third every time. So don't be fooled if the number is weird. It's totally fine if the number is weird. You can also multiply by a negative every time. That's not like illegal somehow, right? So you could have, you know, four, negative two, uh, one, negative one half. It looks to me like I'm dividing by negative two both times, which I am geometric, and the uh, and that common ratio is negative two. All right, so that's one thing. Identifying geometric sequence is one thing, but there's also kind of these things on tests and quizzes where they want to know the nth term. So they might have a pattern like this: two, four, eight, dot, 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 and they'll say find the seventeenth term or find the 23rd term or find the 100th term or a billionth term. And you definitely don't want to just count up. I mean, if it was like find the fourth term, I would just continue the pattern maybe. But I'm going to show you the fifth term as an example. And again, you could easily count up to the fifth term, but let's use the formula so that when it is a big number, you'll know how to do it. This is the formula to find the nth term of a geometric sequence. a to the n, which means the nth term, equals a to the 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. OK, so what is all this drama, right? This is the n term. This is the first term, so that's easy. In this case, we first term is 2. r is this common ratio concept. It's what's being multiplied every time. What's being multiplied in this case? It looks to me like times 2 times 2. So in this case, simple problem so I can explain this. Um, r is definitely 2. This is the common ratio. And then n is the term they're looking for, minus 1. So this would be a to the n equals a to the 1, which is 2, times r, happens to be 2 as well, raised to the 5 minus 1 or 4. This is 5 minus 1, 4. And then you just do this. This would be 2 times, I think 2 to the 4th is 16. Did that in my head. So this would be 2 times 16, I guess that's 32. The fifth term of this would be 32. Yeah, you could have just figured that out by saying mm, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 32, we're cool. But again, don't get cocky, because if you think you can do that in your head, what about the billionth term? All right, so that's the formula for the nth term. The other issue that you'll come against is they'll say, find the sum of the first x terms. Like, find the sum of the first 20 terms. Find the sum of the first, you know, 50 terms. Again, in the interest of like keeping this simple, I'm going to obviously look for a shorter number of terms. I'm going to say find the sum of the first five terms. Can you find the first five and then add them? Yes. Or you could use this genius formula. I wish I could say that I invented it, but I didn't. All right, so this would be sum of the first n terms equals a to the 1 parentheses 1 minus r to the n 
over 1 minus r. Okay? That's weird. Let's see if we can figure this sucker out. So, so over here, we said some of the first five terms. All right? Sum of the first five terms equals a to the 1. In this case, is 1 times 1 minus. What is r? What's my common ratio? What is r? It looks to me like, again, it's times 2 times 2. Sometimes r is weird, like 2 fifths. Sometimes r is negative 11, whatever. I'm keeping it simple because that's how I like to roll. But anyways, we have 1 minus r, again, is 2, raised to the n. n, in this case, is 5, over 1 minus, again, r is 2 down here. So now this gets weird, right? So now we have 1 times 1 minus. What's 2 to the fifth? 32 over negative 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. I'm going to bring this little math situation up here. So let's continue our math above, all right? Then you have 1 times negative 31. That was pretty sloppy. Even I'm embarrassed about that. I'm just going to redo that little sucker real quick. So this is 1. So this is negative 31 over negative 1. Do we agree? 1 minus 32 is negative 31 over negative 1. This comes out to positive 31. So the sum of the first five terms of that sequence that I drew would come out to 31. Yeah, list them all in Adam. If it's a small number, use this formula if it's a big number. So, so basically, that's it. Geometric sequence, it's something where the numbers are being multiplied by the same common ratio every time. You know, times 2, times 2, times 2, times whatever. And then you know how to find the nth term now. And again, don't get cocky because it could be a big number. You also know how to find the sum of the first n terms using those formulas. And that's basically it for geometric sequence problems. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, pass it there, and the credits will be transferred back to your high school.